Athletes from throughout the world have made their way to Budapest in Hungary for one of the biggest events on the sporting calendar. It's the 17th FINA World Championships being staged at venues across the Hungarian capital. At Varysligat Lake, it's synchronised swimming and we've reached the final of eight days of competition where we're about to see the busiest of all synchro events. It's the free combination final. Hello, I'm Mike McCann and with me is the world's foremost synchro expert, Olympian and dual international federation head coach, Andrea Holland. A very good morning, Andrea. Gosh, what an introduction that was, Not Mike. bad, was it? That was very good. Well very deserved, good. though. Well deserved. Thank you very much. I am so looking forward to the free combination today. This is um, this is the routines that these swimmers have the most fun with. And although there's a really serious element to it on the difficulty, it's fantastic to see the artistry and the originality of the routines. What we're looking at at the moment isn't part of the competition. They have the free swimmers that always swim first. These are the ones that finish 13th, and it's only the top 12 that go through, but it just settles the judges down a bit. It's a big day here at Farish Liggett. Not only is this final the free combination final, but later in a few hours' time, you'll be able to join us again for the second of the finals, and that's the mixed duet free. So that will complete the synchronised swimming program, nine events. And uh, it's not going to be Russia, Russia, Russia today. In fact, um, the Russians may take the last gold medal. You never know. That's in the mixed duet free. But the no, no Russian team here in this uh, free combo, and it really does uh, open things up. It may well be a history-making day. The Chinese who've been knocking on the door for so long, this could be their first gold medal in synchronised swimming at World Championships. Yes, I think um, for them, you know, the fact that Russia aren't doing the free combination, it does open the door and from the preliminary rounds that they swam earlier in the week then they they do enter these championships as the favorites for the free combination but the scores for preliminary rounds they don't carry through at all so uh, they can't afford to make a mistake i was watching them in training earlier out by the um the warm-up pool which we're looking at here with the athletes just warming up but they were looking amazing absolutely amazing so um but having said that so were some of the other countries so uh, very very important to do all the stretching before they get in the pool very easy to get cramp if it's slightly cold it's not as hot as it has been in the last few days a few clouds in the sky but um they won't be wanting to get any cramp at all last minute tips from the North Korean coach they were in the pool right until the last possible moment doing final tweaks all looking very very serious that's the coach from Greece she keeps her swimmers in the pool right until the last minute as well but uh, they had a great swim so one of the Greek swimmers in angel and demons is going to be the theme of their routine and you can see that depicted in the headdress that she's wearing <laughs> I'm interested as to why the Russians would have elected not to enter a team in the free combination. They, they did the same thing at the Rome World Championships back in 2009. In fact, it, it was the only event that uh, didn't go to uh, Russia in terms of a gold medal <laughs> due to the fact that uh, primarily they didn't enter. It was Spain from China and Canada on that occasion. But given that, that Russia have so much depth, and uh, I suppose in some ways this is the decathlon of uh, synchronised swimming in that you can have the duets and you can have the soloists doing their own thing at various times and of course the team as well, they can break up and do different things. But this is a world championship title on the line. Why do you think with the Russians, with so many talented swimmers, they, they're not taking part? I think it has something to do with the fact that um, in the Olympic Games from last year, it's only, it's only the duet and the team. There isn't a free combination in the Olympics. And this is only a year later than that. So I think they put so much effort into being world champions, Olympic champions in the team event, that actually they probably don't have the time to then do a combination. And if they were going to do a combination, they, they would want to do it to its absolute best. Mm. So maybe at the next World Championships, when it doesn't follow an Olympic Games, maybe they'll be back again in the free combination. Yes, uh, looking at... Uh, well, they, Barcelona was a post-Olympic year. They had a team 
I'm pretty sure in the free combination then, yes, they did, but not this time. But uh, as you say, they, that, they, don't, routine. they don't do things by half metres, they do they? They don't. That's Mexico. <laughs> They'll be swimming the Budapest 2017. Yes, I think we've gathered that one, haven't we? We know we're in Budapest and what a wonderful place it is. Temporary facilities here. Amazing, amazing pools, both the training pool and the competition pool. And these will, pools will be staying for a few more weeks as they host the World Masters starting at the beginning of August. <coughs> and you've been in the pool? You've, yep. Uh, people in swimming, they often talk about fast pools. They talk about the water. Certainly the clarity of the water is fantastic. What are, what are the attributes of a pool that synchronised swimmers um, hope for? And what have you found here? Two things that we really hope for. One, that it's not too cold, because of what I mentioned earlier. Just, just quickly mention, they're banging on the side here so that the swimmers can hear the taps underneath the water to be in perfect synchronisation. But the things that they look for in the water, very clear and deep, so that they can keep an eye on the other swimmers, and the water has to be um, the right temperature, so not too cold, equally not too hot either. And the temperature here is, is absolutely fantastic. I, I reckon the pool is round about sort of 28 um, 29, so uh, perfect. So you're happy, that's the main thing. Right oh, we have 12 teams in this free combination final. The routines to last 4 minutes 30, it will take 15 seconds either side. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it is going to be fascinating to see it unfold. This is one of the newer events as we are introduced to the teams here to be led off by Kazakhstan. It's going to be Kazakhstan, Switzerland, the North Koreans, and then France, Belarus, Greece, Mexico, Italy, China, Ukraine, Japan, and Spain. Yeah, but interesting. If I don't mind me interrupting just a second, but these are the alternates. These are the reserves that won't actually be swimming. But the North Koreans, they have their hair all gelled and everything, so they are ready for action just in case they're needed. Greece, that would be their mixed duet taken to the stage. So these are in the order that they that they swim. The eighth of nine finals in synchronised swimming. Russia having won six of the seven gold medals. No Russia in this event. They do have a chance of winning a seventh gold medal later today in the mixed duet tech final. Or the mixed duet um, free final, I should say. Italy already taking gold in the mixed duet tech. You can see the platform that they dive off is actually quite high um, and you don't get as much of a chance at home to, to practice diving off that but this is the confirmation of the start list. The final to be led off by Kazakhstan with Switzerland second and the North Koreans, France, Belarus and Greece. And then the top six in random order according to the draw, Mexico, Italy, the gold medalist favourites, uh, China, and then we follow with another medal hope there in the form of Ukraine, Japan and Spain. So while we're waiting for the first team to get ready, routine's four minutes, 30 seconds. They'll be judged three different panels, one looking at execution, one looking at artistic, which has a higher percentage of the overall score, and the third panel focusing on the difficulty of the routine. You will see a huge number of acrobatic moves as the countdown begins. Ten excited and no doubt nervous girls from Kazakhstan. Step up onto the pool deck here at Barish Ligat Lake. The swimmers for Kazakhstan, 10 of them in the water at any one time. Three of them already in the water. Seven remaining on the pool deck. And we're 
just about underway in the free combination fight. <laughs> Yep, the swimmers don't have to start on the side of the pool. And within this four minutes, 30 seconds, they have to do two parts with less than three competitors and two parts must have eight to 10 competitors. So you'll see trios, you'll see duets, you'll see solos, and all of those have to complement the overall routine. qualified for a final in three combination. Fantastic. Included within the team, the Nemec twins, who swam duet earlier this week. With fantastic shots from the mermaid camera. And believe it or not, they've already done nearly 25 meters of the pool. soloist just waiting there patiently at the side she has to stay near to the team so when you transition from team to a solo or a duet the judges it has to be very very clear and that's why they have to start very close and we'll see them take take center stage in a moment after that highlight and now straight into a duet While the duet are swimming, the team will just follow them and stay really close. complimented the duet there they almost like had a frame around what they were doing in the middle and now into a trio so lots and lots of variation very very different to the three teams these combinations a lot more chance for originality to the end really important that they do stay close to each other and into a solo something should be happening with the choreography at all times underneath the water. Lovely to watch that technique. Now into the last minute of the performance. You see the judges there in the background judging what they see above the water. They don't have the advantage of this camera. That's better. And now all the team together. Well, a really great performance there from Kazakhstan. Delighted to have qualified for these finals. Just picked Germany into 12th place. So that would have been their goal before they arrived. So job done. Kazakhstan, as you mentioned, making it through 
in 12th and last placing in terms of those teams into the final with a score 81.03 so a wonderful experience for these young girls yes fantastic experience for them and yeah it's all so close to getting to the finals look at this using the head pushing off so the swimmers underneath are not allowed to touch the bottom of the pool at all so that takes a huge amount of strength flexibility and i love seeing all 10 swimmers <laughs> perfect synchronization even upside down at times good to see the world's press in the background taking some stunning pictures i'm sure not sure if that was supposed to be slightly off balance or not, but it looked good. Score of 82 there, so an improvement on their preliminary score for Kazakhstan. Up from 81-03. Well done, Kazakhstan. The first of the teams in the free combination final. The last day of synchronised swimming here at Larish Nikit. They're all still smiling, but they will be absolutely exhausted at the end of that performance. And then they'll head back to their coach, Nalia Bramluxina, who uh, I'm sure will congratulate them on that swim, but then they'll watch it on video and learn from it. Very excited, aren't they? Swimming in the World Championship final. Now the second of the three combination teams here from Switzerland. The 11th top qualifier with 81.73. The names of the girls here. Team number two in the free combination final, Switzerland, one of those international federations that you coached some years ago. Yes, and the worrying thing is that none of these competitors were born when I coached Switzerland. So you can't take the credit for their performances here. Oh, I can. I can. So another team that will be delighted to have qualified. They've been on a training camp in Hungary since the end of June. They've been working really hard on this performance and their routine of cabaret. into a trio. And some lovely highlights there. He's sitting alone in your room. Come hear the music play. Gosh, that's a, such a lot going on. I felt they cut that first link a little bit short. Halfway back up the pool on the second link. Watch the timing. Synchronization is so important. Really good interpretation. Very good diagonal line, that's very difficult to do. And changing formation at the same time, excellent. You have to watch so closely to make sure you don't miss anything, and that's why they have to swim so close together. little synchronization errors on that little trio there. Lovely height. Again, 
and watch the timing. Really good spacing between the swimmers. Really good transition into the new pattern. Certainly a difficult routine. But they need to make some of the movements just a bit precise, more precise, just to get that perfect synchronization. That was good. Right belly leg followed by left belly leg. Showing really good flexibility in those legs, good extension. Lovely seeing them set up for that. Gosh, if they were touching the bottom, you'd really see it. Brilliant flexibility. They use the bottom, there is a penalty. Lovely overhead shot here. Judges don't get the benefit of this angle, unfortunately. And a strong finish there. Just in time, actually. It's quite a short pre-program. Four minutes, 18 seconds. They're allowed, actually, a maximum of 4.45. So they're 15 seconds either side of 4.30. So uh, a good swim, as I said in the commentary. I like the routine. They just had a few errors on the synchronization, which was a shame, but they looked like they really enjoyed swimming it. And for a lot of these swimmers, a pre-combination will be the final event for them. So uh, they will be quite relieved. I love the height they got there. Look at that. Have to be fantastic divers as well. Great pipe position. Brilliant. Lewis waiting patiently in the background before she takes over. A wonderful flip there. Well, from Switzerland, uh, received a score of 81.73 in the preliminaries. That has been bettered by Kazakhstan. Their main opponent in terms of the lower order rankings in this final. So Switzerland would be looking to improve upon their score to maintain that position. Yes, they certainly will. They had some really good highlights in the performance. Well, they creep in front. 82-0, three by three one hundredths of a point over Kazakhstan. So. They will uh, certainly remain ahead of the team from Kazakhstan. Only just. 0 0.03, but it makes all the difference to them. Well, it makes all the difference to them. It would, be, uh, it would make a, well, a bigger difference, if you like, if uh, it separated 12th through 13th in the preliminary yes. round. Yes. So there are coaches here. Tanya Agostinelli. Tatiana Rutkovskaya. Yeah. Happy Swiss Woo! camp. <laughs> now we have the girls from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea girls wearing their nose clips, such an important part of uh, synchronized swimmers' attire. This is team number three qualifying ninth into the final here with a score of 84.33.
one of the swimmers starting in the water here. The girls from North Korea in the free combination final. Beautiful lift. Very, very elegant. I was watching them this morning in the training pool and they carried on training up until about half an hour ago, going through their paces, trying to get that synchronization perfect. And you can see when compared with Switzerland before, they're just a bit more precise and crisp on those movements, which does help the synchronization. balance and control, slightly different as they came up afterwards. Have consistently made these finals in the past two world championships, generally placed and about 10th or 11th, probably lying ninth after the preliminaries. Beautiful, tremendous flexibility. the timing as they come up on the head first movements. Keep those movements as snappy as possible. So many surprises in this routine. Brilliant. Very, very original and incredibly difficult. Look at that for flexibility. And the strength. Some of these swimmers are so, well, nearly all of them are so slight in their appearance, yet the strength that they have to be able to lift their teammates like they do is incredible. We're getting ready for the finale. Another fantastic swim for Coach Chakri Yop. Big smile on her face, she looked very, very happy. I like the way they did such a difficult figure right at the very end with all of the swimmers in the pool. Really important in these routines, as I said before, you know, you have got parts where you have to have less than three swimmers, and, but that equally, there are parts where there must be eight to 10. 
so important to have that. Look at those legs working underneath with the egg beater action, keeping the height and so expressive. Swimmer on top. Incredible athletes, each and every one of these. Wow. Brilliant. Beautiful pose, posture, hands, right down to the finest, finest detail. Well, the difficulty and execution of elements of this routine, it, it just uh, continues to amaze and impress. And when you think that this team, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, scored in the mid-80s, what do we have ahead of us when we get to the likes of Japan and Ukraine and China? China in the mid-90s. I mean, this is quite exceptional. It totally is exceptional. I mean, every one of these routines that we're seeing today is terrific, high standard. But yes, the ones that are swimming in the last six are unbelievable. 84.2 here. 84.2, it's slightly less than the earlier score for the North Koreans. So down a touch, but boy, that was good. You can see at the bottom of their costumes, they've all got their little nose tips tucked up inside the costume. <laughs> they were 10th in the team tech, they were 11th in the team free, and they finished 11th in Kazan. So they're certainly going to improve upon their performance at the last world championships and despite dropping a touch in the scoring boy they're very very happy yes probably very happy with their swim but probably very happy that that is actually their last performance so they can relax a little bit now the next of the teams in the three Combination final here, the team from France. Free combination is uh, one of the newer events on the synchronized swimming program. It has been around for a while, 2003, but nonetheless, one of the more recent before the mixed events came into being in Kazan. The girls from France. Eighth coming into the final with 85.3. They were 10th in the team free final. And uh, we have the 16-year-old soloist out here in the water, Deb Planu, and also the Tromble twins who swam in the duet tech. Yes, they always come up with something very, very special. This is to the theme of Paris by Edith Pia. Had a lot of problems here with one of their swimmers getting injured. So the reserve have had to come in and swim this routine. The swimmer that was injured is normally the one that does all the flights through the air. But you would never know that they've had a change. I always love their choreography. Let's see what she does here. Beautiful. Um, they swam in the free combination was back in 2013 where they did the most spectacular routine of movies through the ages and even their costumes changed from black and white to full color halfway through the performance it was magical she could have done with getting a little bit more height though on the throw but bearing in mind she doesn't normally do that part it's brilliant to the water that they need to have their costumes out as well. Two legs mid thigh is about right for their level. Really, really 
really beautiful transitions. What I like about this routine is you're getting real variation in the speed of the music. Watch the lines there. difficult but one slight error and it would have all looked a little bit messy I think but I think they got away with it spacing very important to keep changing formation I like the way that changed into the circle there would have liked to have maybe seen a little spin down on that uh, on that lift As I say, they've had a lot of issues with an injury in the team, so all credit to them on that performance. Coaches Julie Faber, Stephanie Marichal. A performance that went 4 minutes 42 and a touch, so very, very close to that uh, cut-off time. Yeah, and that was, what, nearly 30 seconds longer than some of the other mm. performances. I'm just trying to work out, is that the um, Eiffel Tower on the back of the costumes? Let's see if they... Uh, so. Yes, it looked to me like it, the shape of it looked like it could be, which is, the costumes are so beautifully themed, aren't they? Yeah, and it, it, it certainly had a very French feel about the whole routine, so I'd imagine the Eiffel Tower is exactly what you can see. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow, that's the lift where I would have liked a little bit, just a little bit more uh, lift off the platform. But as I say, I think they've done incredibly well, considering Maureen Jenkins wasn't able to swim in the end. And look at this, look at the flexibility here, muscle definition in those legs, terrific. It was a score of 85.3, when eighth in the prelims for the French girls. Here in the final, the judges have seen it like this. 85.06, 85 uh, They don't quite replicate the score that they achieved in the prelims, 85.3. A very good performance there by the French girls. So we've had four teams in this free combination final to date. It's France from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, then Switzerland and <coughs> Kazakhstan. The lead score, just over 85 for the French girls. Bright costumes there being worn by the team from Belarus. Stunning, aren't they? Absolutely beautiful costumes. Yeah, 
the names of the girls, the 10 girls swimming for Belarus. Belarus, 12th of the last World Championships. And they finished 12th in the Team Tech. They recorded a score here of 82.36, qualifying 10th for the final. Straight up in the air and then land straight on her teammates. <laughs> so this is their folk dance. Right. Igor Kornilik. That gives a good idea of how much they're travelling on those arm movements if you look at the boards behind and the judges. I sat in those judges' chairs earlier and it really is a different perspective from where they're sitting. And uh, it was amazing to see them in training, just how much they focus their faces on looking at those judges. Numerous tasks sitting on the judges chair. Lots of strong valley leg sequences coming in here. All of these movements do have names. That's a double vertical into a split. Spin down, slightly falling off that at the end. Now the focus goes back to the team again. Duet staying very still in the background, but still keeping very close to them. You have to be very careful, they keep that vertical alignment, don't fall over the face. Very close. If the team aren't actually performing, they can either be laying on their backs or they can be in an egg beater position. So that's more upright. Lovely cadence movement there from the team. Another valley leg sequence here. So much going on. Era starting to come into the performance. So they're into the last minute now, so they really, really need to keep the energy going. Keep those knees stretched. Lovely interpretation of the folk dance. Their shoulders are nice and high. And now all ten, hopefully in perfect synchronization. So important to show that difficulty at the end. They certainly wouldn't want to make, make a mistake. Natalie Sakharov and on Leona Svajlichnia. 
the coaches and a wave to the crowd. So many of the events here have been complete sellout, especially in the evenings, actually, when the preliminary rounds. I think because, you know, it wasn't guaranteed that Hungary were going to be in the finals, so uh, they had loads of support in the preliminaries in the evenings. Mermaid camera really showing us the engine room, so to speak, of synchronised swimming, and that is such an important part. These things on the top of the water, that everyone can see they don't happen by accident they happen through hard work underneath and the mermaid camera shows us exactly that yes it's really fantastic to be able to see the hard work going on underneath the water oh watch those spins that's really good all at the same level that's very very important and then complimenting. Beautiful images there with the castle behind. Fantastic. So to stay ahead of Switzerland and Kazakhstan, they need in the 82s. Let's see what the judges thought about at Belarus. Team number five in the free combo final here. Eighty-three point four. Well, that is a very good score for Belarus. Eighty-three point four. It's uh, an improvement of a full point on their preliminary swim. Currently, that places them third behind France and the North Koreans, ahead of Switzerland and Kazakhstan. They look really, really happy with that. They finished twelfth in this event last time, two years ago. So. Fantastic result for Belarus. <laughs> does mean Belarus uh, will finish 10th at worst here in this final, so that's a big improvement. We have the Greek flag because the team from Greece is about to step up. Here they come now, team number six. Finishing eighth at the world, last World Championships, ninth in both the Team Tech and the Team Free here. One of the swimmers in the water that will not get to start though. As we're underway, Greece with a score of 86, 7th in scoring in the preliminaries. We've got the soloist there and also the duet performers, Platniotti and Papazoglu. What a good start this is. Amazing. This is Angel and Demons. That's the Angel standing on the top. But the Demons are going to be out to get her. I was talking to them in training and they couldn't remember if it was angels and demon or angel and demons but definitely angel and demons just one in that beautiful white suit wow oh slightly fell off that at the end just couldn't quite keep that balance that was a shame another country that carry on training in the training pool until the very last moment. Brilliant, fantastic height. I like the way they've gone for different costumes to really tell the story of the angel and the demons. Good height on the legs. A 
like the duet to be just a little bit closer to the team. formation changes. So now the solo, the angel, Evangeline Lina Platino. height she gets out of the water just subtle pattern changes from the team while we focus on the soloist such balance such control but watch the timing as you come up on those heads a lot earlier that was really good timing good amount of difficulty in this routine packed with content Another really long routine, nearly 4.42 to so three seconds in. The coaches Natalia Chaneska from the Ukraine and Maria Sivel. I love the way they've depicted the demons and the angel. It was, it was very theatrical, wasn't it? Beautiful routine and lots of support from the crowd. It's entertaining the crowd as part of the story. Uh, the skill that goes in the balance that the girls are able to achieve here. Stunning. It's sport and it's entertainment all rolled together, isn't it? It, it really is. It, it's a complete show of fantastic athleticism, amazing choreography. It is just like being on stage. And that was a fantastic start to the routine with Evangelina on that lift. Another top draw performance here in the free combination final. As we look down at the pool, the pool's not quite as bright as we've seen it on earlier days. There's uh, the threat of rain here at Barish Liggett Lake. It's been so warm over the last few days. You see the clouds high overhead, though. Let's hope the rain holds off. So it was a score of 86 even for Greece in the preliminaries here. It is 87 even as well. So a big improvement there for the girls from Greece. Well done. They take over the lead at uh, the halfway point of this final. Yeah, great performances. 
And that's a good result for them. They finished ninth in the uh, World Championships back in 2013 and 2015. So uh, big kisses for the coach. Castle in the background as we continue in this free combination final. Mexico, our next team here. Another team who continues to improve on the world stage from ninth to the last world championships in this event. They have had two eighth placings, and I think we all recognize the music here. Yep. Out of all the routines that you're going to see today, this is the one that you'll be singing along to. Compilation of ABBA Wow. <laughs> if this only will... my wife was here. <laughs> you'll have a bit of Mamma Mia, you'll see some dancing queens. I love watching their choreography. They always choose music that the swimmers, you can just tell that they love swimming to it. And these were the ones that were ninth in 2015 and 2013. Currently lying sixth, so good result. choreographed right down to the facial expressions as well. Sit down and commentate, Andrew. Yeah. Stop the dancing. <laughs> you can't help it, Richard. It is. Wow, then can't they dance? That was brilliant. And they're certainly having the time of their lives. Love it. Just watch the timing. Always, always the crowd favourites. Right where they put uh, the compilation together, really. synchronization there from an execution point of view we'd like to see them sometimes just a bit higher when they have two legs out of the water gosh that's really hard from a fishtail to an aurora position from the trio Slightly led too far back at the beginning of that throw, so that lacked a little bit of height. Excellent. And back to Mamma Mia again. routine 
I like this bit. Yeah, that's great. Really interpret the music well. Keep that straight line. Oh, don't drift off the line. Well, for fun factor, they always, always have it. Adriana Loftus on the left, but choreographed and coached on this occasion by Ophelia Pereira. Well, they've certainly won the popular vote with the music. In fact, they could have done over the last 40 years. That's how old the ABBA songs are, but they continue to uh, excite the public. Looking across to Andrea here, you've got 10, 10, 10, 10s all round <laughs> by virtue of the music. Just of the music, yeah. Yeah, forget everything else. Yeah, it was. It was 40 years ago that they won the yeah. Eurovision. That's why you get so Waterloo. excited about it. You can relate ah, to it. Ah, but Waterloo wasn't in it. Yes. <laughs> but no, it was a real fun routine. But, you know, the difficulty was there, but execution, they just needed to be a bit higher in the water at times. But for fun factor, for enjoyment, for the team enjoying it, I bet they have a lot of fun when they're back at home doing all of their choreography. This is great. Absolutely great. We talked about the costumes earlier. All of the costumes are fantastic. The synchronized swimming costs a lot of money, full of sequins, but the designing of the costume to fit the theme of the music is so important. Beautiful holding that aurora position, the knight position. Would have liked a bit more height on that, but I'm being always very critical but just trying to explain the difference between what we're seeing now and what we're going to see getting on the podium. Mexico await their score. It was 87.53 earlier. 88.73. Big improvement there for the Mexicans. Delighting the crowd here. 88.73. Mexico take over the lead from Greece and France. But the big guns are not all that far away. That's quite convincing as well, isn't it? Over, over Greece, that was, what, 1.7. So the judges really like that. Maybe the judges are uh, ABBA fans too. The demographics. And if you think about it, you know, Greece have always been eighth or seventh Mexico have been ninth in the last two, so uh, that's why they're so delighted. Well, the competition's about to really hot up now. The girls from Italy. Free combination final and the team from Italy having qualified for hoping desperately for an outstanding performance here to put them in the running for the bronze medal the Italians fifth in the team tech fifth in the team free and coming off a seventh at the last world championships Yes, and Manila Flamini, who took gold in the mixed duet technical earlier this week, swimming in this routine. So that was a special, special time for Italian synchronized swimming, taking their first gold into World Championships. So this is their interpretation of dolphins. Choreographed by Anastasia Yermakova, double Olympic champion who now lives in Italy. Good levels on that spin down from the duet. Lovely throw. Duet need to stay close. 
Now we focus on the team. Good execution. Now the direct moving in closer. Start a fair bit. the movement of the dolphins. Beautiful soloist. Really good height, keeping that height as she does a huge number of rotations. right in front of the judges, really close to them. There are two panels of judges on either side of the pool, so uh, it's important that they do cover both. The crowd always appreciated these highlights. issue there on the head first boost. The precision has to be absolutely perfect so they can always complement each other. Spatial awareness, massive for these athletes. They have their eyes open underneath. They can hear the music underneath, but they will be counting every beat of the music. Really good posture in the water. Their legs will be feeling incredibly tired as they get to the end of this routine. And an unusual finish there, being lifted in an arch. Well, as I say, it was choreographed by Anastasia Yermakova, but the coaches here, Roberto Farinelli, Patrizia Lombardo, doing all the coaching. Anastasia, now a mum to a little boy. Lots of Italian flags flying. Great excitement in the Italian camp. Having won a gold medal at the World Championships in the mixed duet tech. So the Italians with a breakthrough, an historic gold medal and such excitement around the team throughout the championships. Absolutely. And you're getting such amazing picks here in the slow motion. You can really, really see the muscle definition and the flexibility, the strength and the power. A lot of the athletes at the Olympics said that the most difficult sport that they'd all like to try, well not all of them, but a lot of them said they'd love to try synchronized swimming with the extension in the feet there. And fantastic shots from the mermaid camera. Look at that, holding on to the heads. Unbelievable the height they're getting here. And remember, not touching the bottom of the pool at all. Beautiful, beautiful shots. Italy came in with a score of 90.73. And to challenge Japan, they needed to improve a couple of points. Well, they've uh, done their bit. They've got it up to 91.6 now. 91.6, an improvement of 0.9. And uh, now they're waiting on particularly 
Japan, also Ukraine, to see what they can do and see if that score is going to be enough. 91 triple six seven, the score there for the Italians. Yes, with no Russian team here, the door is wide open for places on the podium. So um, they're just going to have a, a long wait now to find out whether they've done enough. Rain is falling here at Farish Liggett Lake, and we're about to see the favourites for the gold medal in the free combination final. The 10 girls who are swimming for China to try to create history in synchronised swimming. So many silvers, so many bronze, never a gold. Perhaps this is the moment for the Chinese girls. China coming off a silver medal at the Kazan World Championships. Silver also in Barcelona in 2011 and silver in Rome 2009. Wow, incredible height there. What a start to this routine. This is going to be four minutes, 30 seconds of absolute brilliance. Fantastic. Judges in the background looking at execution, artistic and difficulty as the rain comes down. Swimming to master and commander. And this is going to be such a commanding performance. Look at how close they're swimming together. Look really closely to see whether you can see any synchronization errors at all. It's going to be hard. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Amazing. Thrown horizontally across the other swimmers. Such incredible balance. Powerful music, but showing so much energy in these movements. Great interpretation. Remember, in these free combos, at least two parts must be less than three competitors, and two parts must be at least eight to ten competitors. Oh, what contrast there, beautiful. As we move into a solo section, I love the way they surround her here in a beautiful circle. Beautiful formation there, the overhead camera. happening incredible strength another brilliant throw in front of the panel of judges here. They'll have to move across the pool as well. Judges hitting both sides. Gosh, the difficulty of that hybrid. And believe it or not, they've only trained together on this team for two months. 
This is the actual choreography of the province of Beijing's team. So the Wu team is already qualified, um, already choreographed. So they've had to teach some of the swimmers from the province of Pingsu the routine. It's not even their national team. Beautiful. Her back flexibility. Here's the sculling technique underneath. Changing the formation all the time. They can hear the music. Wow. Four minutes 32 of absolute brilliance. There's their coaches, Kang Ji, Jin Chan, both from the province of Beijing. They've only swam this routine, as I say, together for two months because they had the Chinese games in May and the team were only selected after that. But gosh, what amazing standards we're seeing here from the Chinese. Yes, this uh, is a wonderful moment for China. They have had podium finishes so often. Their breakthrough year was Rome 2009, one silver and four bronze. They claimed six silvers and a bronze in Shanghai, four silvers in Barcelona, and six silvers and one bronze at the last World Championships in Kazan. Surely this is enough for her, their first gold medal. Oh, I absolutely think so. You watch these highlights, the replay of them. They just look extraordinary. It was an absolutely incredible performance. And you know, if Russia had been swimming in this event, I think it would have been very, very close. Look at that for balance. Their feet aren't touching the bottom of the pool. They're doing the egg beater technique underneath the water. Incredible. And look at this here, the back flexibility, the posture with the fingers, right down to the finest, finest, minute detail. Awaiting the score here for China. 95.96, a magnificent score. China, poised for a gold medal for the very first time in World Championship synchronized swimming. 95.96, so they've bettered their score from the preliminary swim by close to half a point. They were already two and a half points in front of their nearest rival, Ukraine. And this is going to make it very, very difficult. Almost impossible. We'll soon see. Ukraine coming up next. Second in the preliminaries with 93.16. Ukraine have taken five bronze medals here at Budapest. Two in the solo events, two in the duets, and also the team free. What can they do here? Their interpretation of beauty and monster. As the rain comes down. Okay, this is a very, very difficult routine. It's a new routine. Some of the other countries still swimming the routine that they swam last year. But no, new routine for Ukraine. Beautiful height there on the spin from the soloist. originality on that lift and very very quickly into these lifts really good
good interpretation to the music. After the preliminaries, they were lying in the silver medal position, but those scores don't carry through. They know they've absolutely, wow, brilliant. They cannot make a mistake. It needs to be a perfect swim. They want to hold on to that second place. Originality into this. Now they need to start swimming across the pool towards the other panel of judges. synchronization on those angles Look how quickly they recover up under the water to move on to the next thing difficult throw compared with some of the other routines that we've seen need to watch the synchronization just a little bit there Moving into the last 30 seconds of this performance. Really good control there. I like the way they were doing fast movements and suddenly stop. Wow. Oh, just a few tiny little synchronization errors coming into the performance. But Valeria Nejanina. So I wasn't sure whether she looked too happy or not, but I thought that was an excellent performance from Ukraine. Now they just have to wait and see whether it's going to be enough. It wasn't the sharpest and tidiest that I've seen them swim. But I'm sure with the difficulty that they have, that the scores are still going to be very, very good indeed. Look at that. Look at that. I love seeing the extension in the legs and feet. And now she turns into almost like a corkscrew as she hits the water. Feet first. Ukraine were only 0.2 ahead of Japan in the silver medal position in the prelims, trying to hold out Japan in the bronze medal position. And we've already seen Italy, fourth placed Italy, improve their score up to 91.6. So it's a real battle for second, third and fourth behind the Chinese who have recorded that big score of 95-96. That is such an incredibly difficult movement to do. And so much originality. Look at this. Absolutely amazing flexibility. Ukraine await their score now. 
The judges have awarded them 94 exactly. <laughs> Terrific score for Ukraine. It won't be a gold medal. It may well be silver, though. It's China who lead. Ukraine in the silver medal position. Japan next, followed by Spain. So 93.16 and now 94 for Ukraine. The bronze medalist from Barcelona in a breakout year. That was a really good increase from them, wasn't it, from the, from the preliminary rounds. And I'm surprised, actually, because whilst it's a really difficult routine, I did feel there were a few little, yeah, little errors in it. Japan next here at Farish Liggett Lake. Yukiko Anui, the captain of the Japanese team, their soloist. So many fourth placings. Wouldn't she love a medal here to add to the bronze they were able to secure in the team's tech? Japan were the bronze medalists at the last World Championships. They won silver 10 years ago in Melbourne and two years before that in Montreal. The first team ever to win a gold medal in the free combination event. That was in Barcelona in 2003. So you need to remember the theme of this routine all the way through. The theme is mermaids, and they depict that absolutely beautifully. And I love the fact that they've moved across to either side of the pool, so in front of the two panels of judges, and then they move back together again. But just remember the theme. They use their feet exquisitely to get the theme of the mermaids across. artistic point of view. I think this is my favourite routine. They've only been swimming this routine for about six months, which in synchro terms isn't long at all. the costumes as well the overall impression is fantastic because one minute it's color the next minute it's all white beautiful really really difficult hybrid there Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about on the interpretation of mermaids. Look at that back flexibility, unbelievable, beautiful. They were really, really disappointed to just lose out on the team free program earlier in the week. There were tears afterwards. They've seen Ukraine swim. They absolutely know what they've got to do. Watch the timing. Exact. Lovely connected figure there. Look 
fabulous interpretation of a mermaid. Look at that flexibility in that back arch. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, that routine, to me, felt really short. It was actually almost to the maximum time. But when you love a routine that much, as we look at Masei Imura, their coach since 1974, I just love that routine. And if it was purely based on artistic, absolutely they would have it for me. But execution, difficulty come into it as well, and I think it's going to be incredibly close. But out of all of the routines, for me, that was the most beautiful to watch. And the way they depicted the theme was just stunning. And right down to the costumes as well, as we look at the very first lift. But got to look at the difficulty as well. Was it as difficult as Ukraine? I'm not, not convinced it was. just look at the way they use the feet to me this was obvious what the theme was even if I hadn't told you mermaids I think it is obvious what they were doing but just beautiful flying through the air from the castle girls from Japan quite an exceptional performance they are looking for the bronze medal to score over 91.7, up to 94. If they can surpass 94, they are possibly looking at a silver medal. China with 96.1, apparently with the gold medal pass away. Japan anxiously awaiting. What is this score? 93.2. So at the moment, they're in the bronze medal position. Jumping over the top of Italy behind China and Ukraine. 93.2 for Japan. Yep, so 0.8 behind Ukraine. And that's why they're probably looking a little bit disappointed. I think that's more to do with the, the difficulty of the overall performance from an artistic, as I say, fabulous. Yeah, they look really... So, such a shame to see tears after <laughs> such an incredible performance. It's only one smiling so far out of all of the swimmers there. It means so much to them. The final team in this free combination event, the girls from Spain. They know the scores. They know what they've been able to achieve in the preliminaries. And they know they have to swim the routine of their lives here. It's China in the gold medal position from Ukraine and Japan, Italy. Spain qualifying in fifth placing with a score of 90.2. The Spaniards have won a silver medal in the past. It was four years ago they won bronze medals in 2003 and 2005. well-established routine. It's been swung quite a few times before. It's from Amaluna du Soleil. Another country who've had a few issues with injuries. One of their swimmers taken ill yesterday, and I noticed after training this morning, she also was taken off poolside. But a full contingent 
The ten swimmers here. Lovely cadence action. Fantastic shot setting up for the lift. So I love it to be able to see under the water and above. Oh, it looks like real timing issues on that. That was a big mistake. just a little bit. Amazing flexibility as we move to the soloist. The team following on behind, keeping an eye on her all the time. They've been used to swimming here in brilliant sunshine in their last swim. And it's raining quite heavily now. But they'll be so busy focusing on what they're doing, they'll hardly notice. that we've just seen just a few little errors coming into it not quite as precise really like that movement Very strong lift at the end. That's not easy at all because they only have a few swimmers to lift them as there's a double lift. So Esther Yama and Abibas, the coaches. So last to swim in the free combo. I don't think it's going to be enough to get them on the podium, but I think their expectation wouldn't be that anyway. Finished fifth after the preliminaries with a score of 90.20. So we'll hopefully be wanting to get just a slightly higher score. Got a good interpretation of Cirque du Soleil. As I say, quite an established routine for Spain. You don't have to come up with new routines every year. But when you look at Japan's new routine, of, you know, and they've only been swimming that six months, makes you realize what can be done. They were sixth in the team tech, sixth in the team free. They qualify here in fifth placing. And 
and uh, as I mentioned, fifth at the last World Championships as well. The team from Spain. It's going to be China, Ukraine and Japan though as the medalists. Gold, silver and bronze. It's quite exceptional what these teams are able to achieve. Amazing, isn't it? Such an acrobatic sport. Sport with danger. One of these girls has got another swim coming up. Berta Ferreira Sands will be in the next of the finals, the mixed duet three later on. The score here for Spain. An anxious wait. Even more anxious. The Italians wondering where they've finished. 90.6667, so a fifth placing here for Spain. It is China from Ukraine and Japan, gold, silver and bronze, followed by Italy and Spain. That is the order they finish. In the free combination final, what an event. And what a victory it is for China. So another fifth placing for Spain, just as it was at the last World Championships. Yes, as you say, though, what a fabulous World Championships free combination event. Every single one of these teams was extraordinary. But the top three, they're just taking it to a whole new level. Absolutely brilliant. Really was a very entertaining event. High quality uh, those in the stands who had to brave some rain towards the end of it absolutely enjoying every moment of it group hug it's the end of the competition for most of these swimmers just the mixed duet free final to swim later today but uh, they should give themselves a big pat on the back it's the victory ceremony coming up very soon here at Varish Ligat Lake. As you can see, the raindrops on the pool. The result having looking like this. China, 96.1. The gold medal for China. Ukraine, 94 for silver. And 93.2 Japan for bronze. Greece, France, the North Koreans, Belarus, Switzerland, Kazakhstan in that order. Wonderful competition here. Boy to Hunyat Castle, getting a little bit of a soaking at the moment. So eight events have been decided now, eight of the nine, and just one remaining, and that is the mixed duet free. And that'll be staged here at Varish Ligat in around uh, six hours, a touch over six hours from now. But what moments to savour here in the free combination event. Yeah, we can watch a few of the highlights now. So many highlights, must have been very difficult to put this compilation together. I love seeing the reaction of the coaches. As they swim as perform, there's nothing more they can do. That was the Greek. And the ABBA routine from Mexico. Oh, that was amazing. Absolutely brilliant from China. <laughs> that was a slightly different headdress she was about to put on. And look at this. That's how precise you have to be. And this is the mermaids of the Japanese. I love the artistry. And delight for Ukraine as they take the silver medal. It's always so close between Ukraine and Japan once again. Disappointment from Japan after a brilliant, brilliant swim. 
Ukraine just edging at them out again. But they still pick up the bronze. Look at the beautiful, beautiful slow motion, the height that they get out, the castle in the background, the extension in the feet, stretching of the legs. That's amazing, absolutely amazing. And the height, just fabulous, fabulous pictures that we're seeing here from Budapest. The best ever, I think, from any world championships. That's amazing. That was, I think, one of my favorite moments, watching her face as she does that. I've been involved in the sport for many, many years, but there was a huge amount of originality in these routines today. And it really was almost like being at the theater. The stage was set and they put on the show of their lives. And it's the girls from China. They won't worry the f about the fact that Russia were not competing in this event. As you mentioned during commentary, had R Russia been here, the result may have been the same way. Such was the excellence of the Chinese. Absolutely. So, yeah, and to think they're from two provinces that actually technically it's not their national team. The talent. Uh, most of these swimmers would be in the national team when they do get one together. So they will reconvene after this World Championships, get back together and then start training as a national team again. This is them, you can see almost like the nervous twitches as they wait to walk on. There'll be one person in the team that will be counting them on. So they're in perfect synchronization as they walk on. This is great. It came up after the message yesterday. Really using the water to create the effect on some of these routines. Originality, it's just amazing, isn't it? There is, there is no limit as to what these teams are able to choreograph and perform in the water. So did you have a favourite? Forgetting the result, what was your favourite, do you think? Was it ABBA, because you could sing along? No, the, ABBA was before my time. I didn't recognise most <laughs> of the music, but you yeah. were certainly up and dancing. Now, look, I like the Japanese. I thought it was wonderful the Japanese were able to secure a medal here. It's their second medal of the World Championships, but it could have been so many more. They've been uh, dealt a cruel blow by this team from Ukraine. They've uh, collected so many bronze medals, but now Japan have their opportunity and Ukraine, of course, elevated to a silver medal finish. This is them going through their paces before they swam. And it was a magnificent swim from Japan, and I just hope they're not too disappointed. Because, like you, you know, it was one of my favorites, but the crowd favorites, or the announcers, the commentators' favorites, don't necessarily always win through, because it's the execution and the difficulty of the routine as well. But from the artistic side, for me, well, Japan had it. I just, this is the routine I think I will remember the most. And I love the, the costumes as well. The fact that they were white on one side and then all different colors, a complete array of colors on the other side to help create that. And it was so special. And they tried something different as well. But look at this fat flexibility, just beautiful. You've got the masters coming up. Uh, you'll be doing I'll exactly be doing that. This, exactly that. Exactly this. In fact, I'll be in a flatter split than that. <laughs> <laughs> and the reaction of the Japanese girls. Masai Mura on the right. I've talked about her a lot at these World Championships, but she really is the mother of synchronized swimming in Japan. And big, big smiles from her. Coached them since 1974, apart from a short break when she went to China and helped them. And that's why China came up so much in that time. So um, she can take a little bit of credit for their performance too. 
So the girls will be coming out to collect their medals very shortly and uh, we'll rejoin them in just a moment. Victory ceremony is 
to take place in just a few moments here at Barish Ligat Lake. Three combination final. From the girls from China waving to their supporters in the stands. Despite the rain, uh, quite a few people have stayed on to see this victory ceremony. Technical Supervised Swimming Committee. Representing the medals. The winner is of the bronze medal, Japan. So the bronze medal going away of Japan. The well deserved bronze medal. It goes with the bronze they won earlier in the competition. So finally, some rewards. Team Tech, and now, of course, a free combination. Yes, so lovely to see them picking up these bronze medals. But they will be slightly disappointed. Had hoped really for that silver. With so much potential leading up to Tokyo 2020. And they had an absolutely stunning trail with their routine mermaids. so much to them doesn't it uh, despite the fact that they were pretty much secure uh, assured I should say of the bronze medal there there was little joy they were after silver well ultimately after gold but uh, silver was their main little rivalry going on with Ukraine absolutely it was just so close as I said in the commentary the artistic side in my opinion Japan absolutely had that execution and difficulty perhaps that's where ukraine just had the edge but they'll go away they'll continue working in two years time gosh that's going to be so exciting the world championships to see how they've progressed and whether they can get back to generally being ahead of ukraine which was a place they held before and silver 0.8 93.2 Japan 94 for Ukraine <laughs> Ukraine a silver medal this time they've had an excellent world championships five bronze and now a silver medal for Ukraine and Anna Voloshina has won all of those as the soloist a member of the duet and of course the team tech and now the team free combo yep they've certainly exceeded expectations while they've been at these world championships an array of medals great to see them getting the silver medal fantastic results fantastic swims from the team from ukraine 
finished third back in this event in 2013. But on that occasion, China didn't enter and just missed out on getting a medal two years ago. So fantastic silver for Ukraine. Light on their faces, one very happy team. Beautiful, beautiful medals, aren't they? Yep. And uh, they'll be pretty heavy as well. And Moloshina with six of them to carry home. I don't think she'll mind. World champions and winners of the gold medal, the People's Republic of China. It must sound beautiful for the girls from China. World champions. How well deserved this is. That record, as I mentioned, just as. Russia really emerged on the world scene in 1998. China had a breakthrough year. It was only eight years ago at World Championships. Rome 2009. They claimed a silver and four bronze medals. They did much better at Shanghai in 2011 with six silvers and one bronze. Here come the Chinese, we thought, at that stage. Four more silvers at Barcelona in 2013 and another six silvers and a bronze Kazan in Russia two years ago and now China have claimed a gold medal yeah, absolutely no doubt of the result and who was going to be the world champions had a massive score 95.96 they swam to master and commander. And they totally commanded the free routine combination championship. So in the team's events, it's uh, two silvers for China, the team tech and team free, and now the gold in the combo. with the Yang twins as well from China getting the duet as well they were the uh, they were put down as the reserves for this team so didn't even swim in it proudly flying the Chinese flag <laughs> Well done, China. Some very happy girls there. There's been an enormous amount of hard work going into the Chinese synchronized swimming program. China taking the gold, Ukraine the silver, Japan the bronze. Magnificent competition. And China getting the rewards for so much effort over the years. 
So many silvers, so many bronze. And now the Chinese girls win their first gold medal at World Championship Synchronized Swimming. Yes, world-class athletes, each and every one of them. What a special, special moment for them. All lovely medals, but they will cherish the golden ones more than any other. Just like the Russians, the Chinese girls over the years have collected so many medals. They've been silver and bronze up until this moment. And uh, well done, Ukraine. Jumping realistically from regular fourth place finishes up to bronze. And now in this event, they're up to silver and Japan back on the podium. Now posing for photographs and memories that will last a lifetime. What a special moment for all of these athletes. <laughs> and Yvonne Shina on the uh, right there. Gosh, she has to, she have to have a new suitcase, won't she, to take all those medals home? That concludes this session at the Varashiga Plate. Really enjoyed that event. Free combo, the most entertaining, the busiest of all of the events on the synchronized swimming program. It's the eighth of nine, so Russia, having not taken part here, remain a winner of six of eight in the two solo events, the two duet events, and uh, the two team events before this combination, the team free and the team tech. Russia, six from eight. And now Italy and China, gold medalists as well, with one event still to come. And that'll be right here at Barish Ligat in uh, around six hours from now, so make sure you tune in for that the second of the mixed events. We look forward to bringing you that. Can the Russians reverse the result over the Italians from these World Championships and retain the title against their great rivals, the Americans, who beat them in one of the two mixed events in Kazan. Yes, really looking forward to the mixed duet finals. Again, you know, difficult to know who's going to win in the preliminaries. Russia just took it, but uh, all of the routines, certainly from the top three or four, were fantastic. So uh, that should be a fantastic end to the synchronized swimming events here at these World Championships. And then the swimming to come. Swimming to come. And uh, that mixed event we speak about, it's the only evening final here in the synchronized swimming program. There's the medal tally. And uh, Russia with six gold and one silver. China jumping up into second place with a gold and four silver. And Italy, that one gold as well. Silvers to Spain and Ukraine, bronze Japan, United States. As the rain continues to fall, it's been so hot for the 